there are products that become companies, and then there are companies that come up with a product. Um, and one of the interesting things you see over the years is that many of the most successful technology franchises were products first, way before they ever became companies. Um, and so just in my own experience, Netscape was a research project, was based on a research project at University of Illinois that we had worked on for three years prior. And in fact, the team had come together at Illinois uh, before we started Netscape. Um, you know, Microsoft, Bill Gates, and Paul Allen were like deep into PCs early on before they even thought there was a software business. Um, you know, Apple, you know, Jobs and Wozniak built the first Apple sort of as hobbyists. Um, more recently, Mark Zuckerberg had Facebook running out of his dorm room, you know, way before he ever thought of starting a company. Um, and then my other favorite example is Twitter. Um, Twitter was a side project at a company called Odeo, um, and Odeo wasn't working. Twitter was a couple of guys who were basically knew that the, the Odeo product, which was a podcasting product, was going to fail. Um, and so they were you know, frustrated and unhappy, and so they started the side project Twitter, and it just started to take off. Um, and so the, the product that becomes a company is a really good template um, because, and here's my sort of theory on that, is because it's a demonstration that the product has to exist. Like, the market needs the product so badly that somebody actually built it and deployed it, and you can actually see evidence that people want it even before there was an economic motivation to do so. Like, that's, that's market demand. Like, that, something magical is going on there at that point. In contrast, great entrepreneurs who kind of, you know, the sort of stereotypical, well, Hewlett Packard, Hewlett Packard counterexample, company, then product. Um, the original found HP archives put on, online a while ago. They put the original uh, minutes of the first HP board meeting. Um, and they're great minutes because it's like you know it's, it's you know Mr. Hewlett, Mr. Packard. They were, this was like in the 30s, right? So these guys are really young at the time. And it's like their lawyer and their accountant, whatever. And it's like you know assembled and such and such in Palo Alto at 2:48 p.m. And boom, you know first order of business, cash. Company has three thousand dollars, whatever in the checking account. It's like topic number six, product. Um, and it was one line. It said the product that the company will build um, uh, has not yet been decided. Period. <laughs> Topic number seven, right? Like they didn't know. Like they didn't know. They had like a general idea that there was going to be something to do with electromechanical, something, something, something. I mean, this was before the computer, um, literally before the computer when they started this thing, right? So they didn't know what it was going to be. Uh, and they came up with many good ideas later, but they didn't know. So that, that's a success case of company first, then product. But we see a lot of failure cases, which is smart entrepreneurs sitting around saying, I really want to start a company. And now let's go try to figure out something interesting and good to do. And it's very easy in that process, we've found, to kind of fool yourself into believing that there's a market and that there's a need. Because you, you want to find something. You have a very strong motivation, internal motivation, to come out with an answer. It's very hard to go through that process for three months and then say, you know what, we can't come up with any good ideas. You know, let's just go back to our day jobs. Um, so um, yeah, it's a big company of your choice. Um, and so um, there's a very strong motivation to kind of fool yourself. Um, and so that, that we, we're always a little bit leery of those. Um, and in fact, if you track those kind of through fund, like those are often the ones that aren't actually ever able to raise money, because um, you know the VCs can kind of, you know, VCs are good at this kind of thing; they can kind of smell that kind of thing coming. So, uh, moral of the story is it has to be, a, it has to be, a, it has to be a really good idea. That often will be an idea that is pre-existing at the time you decide to start a company. And if it isn't, be really careful because you're kind of, you know, you're walking on sharp rocks at that point with a high risk of falling, you know, off the cliff into the ocean.